Okay, so this right here is our sensor coil. As the magnet rotates, I'll be able to pick up the frequency and be able to tell how many um, hertz or what RPM the generator is going at. So here's the turbine system. It's going to be completely sealed in the vacuum chamber. It'll be able to take pressure and vacuum. It will be able to. This is our water battery right here. We got about six inches of foam. 350 gallon tank. I wasn't recording. Okay, so we got our solar reflector behind there. And that tube will absorb all the light that's reflected in that radius, basically. Um, so we're going to test this versus a regular bulb, or just a bulb without the reflector, and see if we can't get... That should be about five times the amount, four to five times the amount of energy than we get over here because of those gaps there number one and number two because there's nothing reflecting the extra light surrounding it <clears throat> so we've got the reflector on one we don't have the reflector on the other and I just wanted to show it's really interesting how the back of the bulb is actually brighter than the front of the bulb see it's a lot brighter over here than it is over here and that's because it's collecting the Sun from the shape also one thing to note is that we are going to get uh, a thermometer to show you how how hot each one is and we'll start the test at the same time tomorrow after it cools down during the night so stay tuned okay so the bulb without the without the reflector boiled out weighs 4.13 pounds 4.138 and the one with the reflector ended up with 1.1 1 .1 pounds pounds Leaks. We fixed all the leaks. Tenth time is the charm. Just use eight times the amount of Teflon tape that you normally would and tighten them down really tight. Use that. So anyways, we uh, tried to seal this thing so many times and then we finally sealed it. Um, this we sealed perfectly the first time. Disassembled it because we found out there was brass in our unions these unions right here I found out there was brass in them and can't have brass in an ammonia environment because brass will corrode from ammonia Bra brass brass will corrode from ammonia so this is our condenser right here this will be the collection source for the exhaust of the turbine and pump. It'll go from the pump into the condenser. If there's any vapor in the condenser, it'll condense quicker. Heat will transfer faster. And it will evacuate and maintain the vacuum. Okay, so sorry about the mess, but we've got our condenser here. We'll be putting some ice in there represent cold winter temperatures. Um, the exhaust of our condenser here
goes into our intake of our pump here. And that will get pumped up, the liquid will get pumped up, the ammonia and water, up into the top of the boiler. And then it will go, it'll travel down a tube, it, sorry, it won't go into the boiler, it'll travel down a tube, go into the bottom of the boiler, expand, create pressure, and then that pressure will stop that check valve right there. So it'll push back, but it won't be able to push back past the pump. So after the liquid gets inside of the boiler that's inside the water battery, it'll come out this side. It'll be a gas, expanded, and ready to do work. That'll go into the intake. This is an intake, and this is an intake. That'll go into the intake, spin the turbine, condense on the way out of the turbine, and then that liquid will travel down into the condenser, and it will repeat the cycle. So I'll just go ahead and go up, in, out, down, in, through the turbine, out the turbine, into the condenser, and then the cycle will repeat. So we're going to pump some boiling, or we're going to pump some ammonia into the boiler and see if our pressure increases right before our nozzle. You can see we got our valve turned off there. So the pressure coming in is displayed here. Right now we're at minus 7 pounds of atmosphere or we're at 15 inches of mercury. We're gonna see if that goes up when we add the ammonia. We gotta pump it in. Before, or the way we're gonna pump it in is with this Variac right here. Getting it plugged in. And the Variac goes to a bridge rectifier right here. This is a full bridge rectifier. And it comes in and the Variac drops the voltage from higher volt to lower volt with a transformer. It's like a variable transformer. And then it charges up these capacitors here. And it's with DC. So AC goes in, low volt AC goes in, and then these capacitors smooth out the voltage so that you get a steady DC current. And that goes and it spins the motor so we can get a variable speed right here by affecting or by turning the by turning the variac you can get a variable speed. So the higher I turn up this variac the faster this motor goes. And we're gonna pump that coolant or we're gonna pump that anhydrous ammonia into the boiler which goes up there, down into the boiler. I know when I open it. So the vacuum box held, no leaks, everything was good, and we heated up the system to 160 degrees while we were charging the system with ammonia, and the box deformed, and we got new leaks formed. So. We have to reseal the box and to keep the to keep it from a deforming at 160 degrees is what it was. We're going to add some uh, stainless steel braces around the side. Um, the reason I didn't want to do that in the past is because our generator's uh, magnet is so powerful and we don't want eddy currents building up in any metals surrounding the turbine. Um, other than 
the turbine stage, it's fine to have the eddy currents build up there because then you just get more heat and efficient, the turbine runs more efficiently. But, yep, here's the vacuum chamber and the turbine detached from the system. And so I've got to go to Idaho and get my teeth fixed. So we're going to get this box fixed up while I'm gone and come back and do some more testing. So sorry I wasn't able to get the testing in. Sometimes this stuff happens and vacuum chambers are really annoying. <laughs> So yeah, the, the plastic should definitely hold up. It was just bowing in about a half of an inch, which was, which was quite a bit, but it wouldn't have bowed in like that if we had some kind of frame or support around it. Um, the thing about stainless steel is it's not as conductive, so it, it's not going to matter as much. Having it, you know, eight inches away from the actual magnet, so um, I think that it'll be fine having that stainless steel on the, or next to the, um, not next to, but away from the magnet. So we're gonna get the system ready and we're gonna take off to Utah. I'm gonna go to the dentist and then come back and do more testing. So appreciate you guys being patient and I'll have more updates and more uh, CAD drawings or I'll have CAD drawings coming up soon. But, yep, that's, that's our update for now. So we're cleaning the ammonia out of the system so that we can take it inside and open it up. I'm just gonna use this air to get it out of the system. We have it set to one throttle and it's really quiet. 122 hertz is, it's probably going about 4,000 RPM right now. Um, I'd have to do the math on that. But yeah, it's uh, really unfortunate that we have to wait for this test, but... I can still the ammonia. It's okay. We will get it fixed up and uh, good to go, you know? My frequency meter wor is working really good because I've got my coil up here at the top there and that reads, just reads the frequency. It doesn't have to be like a real big or a real nice coil. But it seems to be reading the frequency a lot better because there's no not a lot of vacuum app or whatever. There's definitely a lot less air output. So I got a lot more windings on the coil now. And we're getting, uh, this is uh, the voltage straight off the, uh, straight off the generator. And Boy, does it sound really nice. It sounds really good. Uh, we don't have any... Don't have anything funny going on. Uh, let's see what our, what our speed is. So we'll be running this quite a bit faster. And I thought I would just show you guys this, this generator running and the voltage and stuff just because give you something to see. 216 volts, so it's still accelerating. Frequency, 170. So the speed's going up still pretty fast. Of course, the volts is nothing without amps, but we've proven that we can get a lot of amps out of this thing. Uh, 
huh? So we still got a very large range of. Say what, Schmoke? 